Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today it's another trying to fix video, another video where I've bought a job lot off something off eBay and I'm going to do my best to fix it. So now you might remember I started doing a Walkman series earlier on this year and I've still got a few to do on that actually and I thought well hold on, okay they seem pretty popular, why don't I try the CD version of it? So if you have a look here, I've got a load of Sony CD Walkmans and I got them really really cheap these two look the same so that actually might be quite good because maybe I can get one working one out of both of them some of them are really nice and the quality looks amazing on them look at this one here look how tiny that is now I had a quick look at these earlier and it looks like some of them need specialist batteries or like one of them has the battery but then I don't have the charger so I'm not sure how many of these I am going to be able to get to work Okay, that's got a nice rattle to it. Rust in battery pack, so that might be fixable then, if that's all that's wrong with that. Got something very strange here called a Data Discman, and it says here, electronic book. So I don't know whether this was some kind of very early book reader, like a kind of Kindle in a way, but where you physically put the book in. So I'm going to have to Google that, learn more about that one. But with this one, it's got batteries in, and it does actually turn on. It did. Hold on. There you go. Insert the disc. So uh, yeah, maybe I will try to buy a disc off eBay or something if they still exist. I don't know. This is all in. I'm thinking Japanese. I don't really know, so I don't actually understand it. But uh, I've never seen that or heard about that before. In fact, I never actually had a Sony Discman before. I had the Walkmans, well not Walkmans, I had like cheaper versions of it. But uh, I think I was a little bit old for the Discman because these probably came out, I, I don't know, I need to decide which one I'm doing first and look up the age of it, but I was thinking I was probably at university and stuff when uh, when these came out and I had other things on my mind rather than listening to music when I was out and about. So uh, yeah, that's all of them here. Now I got them for a really, really good price, if you look at this well happy with this. It says here $19.99 which is obviously a very good price but I actually paid $17.99 so I don't know if it was an offer or something but if you have a look it says here you won this item for $17.99 so I'm not too sure whether it was an auction or whether it was a best offer or buy it now best offer I can't remember but basically you can see them all there so there's eight of them in total one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Well I've actually got nine so which one do they send me extra that's not here? Ah, they sent me this one, which looks like a really nice one. In fact, this one looks like it is in the best condition. So I might start with this one because then it might be easiest for me to sort of have a an easier fix because I've never taken these apart before. So I, I, uh, I would rather kind of start off easy to build my confidence and then get harder as I go along. But that might not be the case. This might end up being the hardest one. Now it just says here, these items are be sold as faulty for spares or repair only. It's possible that there might be further faults from what I've already given in the description, so please bear this in mind. Some faults that we found out are not turning on, crackling noise, and it just says this list is not exhaustive, so it may have other issues or faults that I've not discovered. Bear that in mind, blah, 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 blah. So, uh, yeah, either way, even if I just get one of them working, I'm going to be happy. And I honestly think they will make for an interesting video because... The quality of them look amazing, and they're Sony, so you know that there's going to be a certain uh, uh, that they are going to be there. You go, that they are going to be quality. See, with this one now, it looks like this takes specialist batteries. So unless I buy them, can you see they're like flat? Unless I buy them, I'm not going to be able to get this one working. But what I could do is maybe I could rig up some kind of power adapter for it. But with this, it looks like it's a kind of weird connection there. I don't really know, you see. So let me start off simple. I think I am going to start on this one here because with this one I can just put normal batteries in it. Actually, this has got rechargeable batteries in. But there you go, I can just put normal 1.5. Yeah, I can put normal AA size batteries in there. And then we see how we go. So bit by bit I'm going to work my way through them. They're all going to be on separate videos because it's going to take a long time to do each one. It might not. Some of them might just need a clean on the battery terminals. But I don't think so because it looks like turns on, no play. It looks like a lot of them have screen is gone. They've been fault-finded already, not turning on. So uh, 
maybe they've been apart already, I haven't got a clue. But that's what this series is about, it's going to be trying to fix, and I might not be able to fix any of them, but that's still going to be enjoyable to see the inside of them. So let's get started on the very first one, and then if you like the look of the others, then hopefully bit by bit in the coming weeks and months I will get through them all. Okay, let's pop a couple of batteries in here and see if we get any life out of it. So I'm just putting in two AA batteries. Now, how do you even turn this thing on? Should it just come on? Resume, off, on. Well, it doesn't seem to be any sign of life to it. Oh, here we go. No disc. So what did I do there? Did it just take a bit of time to come on? Let's turn it off. Oh, here we go. I just heard it move. Oh, well, let's put a disc in and let's see what's happening. Now, I've got two discs here. I've got quite possibly the best singers of the... Uh, the 21st century and that is of course Jedward. I'm only joking, this is my daughter's CD, but they are comedy gold, you've got to watch them. And they're real, I think. <laughs> right, so we got that. Now for copyright reasons as well, I've got to be careful what I play on here, haven't I? So what I've done is I've just got a little book, Some Dogs Do, which is actually a great book for kids. So let's uh, plug this in here and see if we get anything out of it. It says line out and also headphones, but I wonder... How does it know? I mean, what's the difference? Does line out just amplify it more? Let's start with uh, let's start with a bit of Jedwood. Now, I hope I don't get done for a copyright with Jedwood. I can hear it spinning. Oh, is it noisy? Is that it? Would that be it? That must be it, must it? Yeah, so it's when it moves. Okay. Right, that's going to be a hard fix to fault, uh, hard fault to fix from my very first one. So when it moves, so would that be a loose? Oh, it's very loose, isn't it? Look at that. So would it just be a bad spindle? Can these be tightened up? Oh, it's a cracked spindle is what it is. This spindle here is cracked. Right, yeah, look. There you go, it's broken there. Can you see? Let me zoom right. Let me get the light on it so you can, you can see. There we go, look. Right, so it's cracked here. I wonder whether I could take this apart and glue it. I mean, do I even have to take it apart? Because I'm certainly going to be taking apart some of the others, so we're going to get to see the inside of the others anyway. Do I? Should I just put some super glue in there and then a bit of plastic weld on the top? Because the disc's only going round here. That has to. That bit there is hitting the the metal bit here. So does it matter if there's a bit there? I wonder. It looks like there's quite a bit of clearance round here. I reckon that's the only fault with it. Either that or the other option is, I'm going to have a look at the others just to see if any of them look similar. Because they might all be exactly the same. So bear with me for a bit. Okay, so I've looked at all the other ones and they're all slightly different. I mean, I don't know whether it, they're going to fit or not, because there's a chance some of these won't be able to be fixed. In which case, then I could just take the whole spindle out. But I'm not sure if there's different sizes or not. I'm just a bit worried about gluing it, because the thing is, I'm not 100% sure what's underneath here. See, basically, if you have a look, we've got two cracks here, which are supposed to be here. We've got two cracks here, which are supposed to be here, and two cracks here. But then what's happened is, it's broken from that crack upwards. But more importantly, if you have a look at this one here, it's cracked right the way up there to there. In fact, look. There you go. It's actually off. Okay, there's a little ball bear in there. I wonder whether this whole thing will just come off. Yes, it will. Okay, oh, so that's it there. So it's just like using a little bit of 
It's like a rubber O-ring to push the ball bearings out. So if I take out that rubber O-ring, I should... Will that come out? I should be able to glue this... It's kind of glued in, but I can glue it back in afterwards. Let's take the ball bearings out so I don't lose them. Put them on this bag here. I should be able to now glue this together and kind of crush it back together like it was... Maybe like it was about to break there as well. But I think that's good now I've got it apart. So hopefully this bit here is going to be okay. Hopefully the wear's not on here. Right, so uh, I'm going to get my little blue mat set up, some super glue, and see what I can do with this. See if I can get it back into kind of one shape again. It's just disintegrating in my hands. We've got it in three parts now, and also this part here, there's another bit about to break off. So I'm going to start on that bit, and then uh, I'm just going to work my way through. I'm just going to super glue it up, see how it feels. I'm using super glue and also super glue activator to make it go off nice and quick. And I've also got a UV pen to go over at the very end. And we'll see what it's like. We'll see if it works. If not, maybe I'll have to look into whether these things can be bought or not, because maybe there's a, a huge amount of spares online. I've never looked into it, so I don't know. There might well be loads of spares available. So I'm putting super glue on one side, activator on the other side, and hopefully when they go together they're going to dry quicker. Which they do. That bit stuck to my glove and pulled it off. So with this glue here, it's quite nice because it's really very mess free. It will stay a liquid. It's, you can leave it on there and it will just stay a liquid. And then when you're ready, you just put this UV light on it and then it goes off in a, a few seconds. So it says here like a three second rapid repair, but I always kind of leave it on each part for about 10 seconds because I'm thinking the longer it is, maybe the more chance that there is of curing it a bit more. It still fits in there. Well, I'm going to put the balls back in now and uh, put the rubber band back in and we'll see if it's made a difference. That was a lot harder to get on. Yeah, I'm not, not overly happy with that because I think it feels like it's going to break the disc. I'm trying to bend it in a bit more. Let's do the Jedward one and then it doesn't matter if it breaks. That's very tight. Okay, well, we'll see if it's actually making a difference or not. See if it's still scraping every time it moves around the place. No, it's still doing it, and now it's not even playing. No, okay, so that hasn't made any difference at all. Yeah, too loose. In fact, the whole thing wants to come off like that. Right, I'm going to have to look into whether you can buy replacement ones of these. In the meantime, I'm just going to see if I can borrow one off one of my existing uh, existing Walkmans, existing uh, Discmans. 
Okay, so I've been looking at all the others and they're all slightly different. So if you have a look here, you can see these are like metal balls on it. But with these other ones, it looks like they're tiny bits of plastic on little bits of spring. But what I'm thinking is, rather than just worrying about replacing this whole thing, all CDs, as far as I know, well they have to be, don't they? All CDs have the same hole in the middle. So does it matter, for example, if this outer one, the outer diameter is slightly smaller? What I'm thinking is, can I not just prise off this whole thing here and then just slide a new one on? Because I've had a look on eBay and you can get them really cheap, but they're all advertised for PlayStation 1. But that might be just because possibly... Uh, there's no demand, there might not be much demand for Sony Discmans, but if you look at there, £2.40, £2.26 for two of them, that's from China, £2.45 for, I don't know if that's for one or two, it's probably just a one, but so basically it's £2.50. So what I'm thinking is, maybe it doesn't really matter, as long as it's not too big, because if it's too big it's going to foul the outer bit, because this whole thing spins, but if it's too small, is it actually going to make a difference as long as the depth is the same? So if you have a look here, this is basically just a fraction of a millimetre or maybe one millimetre above this bit here with the laser. So if I put a new one in and it's still just one millimetre above, that means then the laser height should be the same. And I'm thinking, it, when I've seen other lasers, they do move up and down a bit. So maybe if the height was slightly out, maybe this calibrates it itself. Do you see what I mean? Maybe discs are not perfect. Maybe some of them are a fraction of a millimetre bigger than others. I don't know. I think that's what I'm going to look into. I'm going to basically try to pry off one from one of these other ones and then I can buy one from eBay and uh, when I come to fix one of the other ones up, hopefully the, the one will be through from eBay. So let's, because I've got two of these and this one here says screen is gone, so really this is not going to be any good if the screen's gone. I'm going to see if I can take this one off here and put it onto here. So to begin with, let me try and prise it off, because if I look very closely, that to me looks like it's just the motor straight underneath it. Do you see what I mean? The spindle off the motor. I mean, there might be a series of gears in here, but I don't think there is. So I'm going to go under with a very flat blade, and I'm going to try to just turn it round and bit by bit, just try to move it up. I can hear it kind of clicking. I don't know if that's good or bad. There we go, it's coming, look. There we go. There we go, so, look at that, it's kind of chamfered up at the edge. So now, if I get one similar to that, I should be able to just pop it in. See, that's gonna to be too small. But it doesn't matter if it's too small, but I might as well try to get one the same size. Look, this one here it looks to be the same size. And also, this has a nice bit of rubber around it. I mean, I know nothing. Maybe these are all very critical, and they all have to be perfect, but maybe not. I'm just wondering, all of them do seem to be ever so slightly different, so maybe it is quite important. Obviously, if you're used to doing these yourself, you're going to know right now. But remember, I don't know if it's critical or not. Okay, well, this one seems to be the same size. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one out put it in. Remember, if it works, then I know that that's definitely the fault, and then I can worry about, uh, I can maybe worry about looking into replacements, because maybe you can get proper replacements for the Sony ones. Look how easy that one came off. Oh, look, it's the same. It's got the same chamfered bit. The only difference is that this has nice rubber to grip on, and this one doesn't. Let's pop this one on. Yeah, it's going to fit. Okay, the difference is though, it's definitely higher up because of that rubber bit. So now the disc is going to be further away from the, uh, from the lens. But it works perfectly, as you would expect. Let's plug it in and see if it actually does anything. Right, it's saying no disc, so obviously the height is critical.
yet no disc. Okay, well, I'm learning. I'm learning. Let me just double check this one here. Well, that one's spinning up. Maybe this is just dirty. Oh, this a DVD. That's why it doesn't work. It's a, it's a, uh, it's a picture. It's an actual video itself. Right. Okay. There's no sound. Right, so it's not working. No, it's not liking that. Right, okay, so the wobble's definitely gone, but it's not liking it because it's it's probably too high. Just gonna see if I can take the middle bit off this one. Okay, so it's a different design. It's too big. Yeah, that's not gonna work. Well, that's going to have to be glued back on there now. Oh, something so simple is actually becoming a bit of a pain. Right, okay, well at least I haven't broken that one. That will still work fine on this one over here. So let's pop that one back on. There we go. Right, okay, I'm gonna struggle now with this. I'm gonna look around the house and see if I've got any other spindles that might fit. Well, I'm not having much luck finding something similar. What I'm wondering is, I don't actually need to have it just uh, like a pressure fit, do I? Because this can actually be glued. This can be glued down onto here, along here. So I'm wondering whether there's a way I can just make this work by gluing this down onto here, because the one that I've just taken off before was glued down. So there's no reason this can't be glued down once I get the balls and the rubber ring in there. In which case then, I'm not gonna have an issue with the height. I just have to make sure that it hasn't spread out too much so it can grab the discs without wanting them to snap because the problem is what will happen is can you see here it's starting to snap just across here now so obviously if it's hard to get on and off then that crack could get worse and then the disc isn't going to work so that's what I'm just thinking about at the moment what I'm going to do is I've just cleaned it up a little bit because obviously the more times you glue it and stuff the kind of bulkier and bigger it always gets so I've just been scraping off the old glue from it and now I'm going to glue it again but this time instead of having this strong on its own I'm going to glue it onto the actual spindle and then hopefully all this surface area at the bottom against the spindle will actually make a good connection. done is I've just made it one big sort of glue and UV glue mess. Now I'm going to get a Dremel tool and I'm going to basically sand the glue down to size and then hopefully what will happen is the glue would have just filled in in all the cracks and uh, hopefully the CDs will go on and off it quite well.
Okay, I think that is fitting pretty good. So it looks like it's pulled it right the way in and it actually goes on and off nice and easy. The only thing is it looks a mess. So what I'm going to try and do is, I know it sounds silly, but I think I'm going to try and buff it and then hopefully I'll be able to get rid of all those scrapes and uh, get it back to how it should be looking. You can see all the dust and dirt on the floor here. So quite a bit's come off it. But all the ball's still moving, so the, uh, the rubber's still doing the job on the inside. So I'm going to try and buff it now to get it looking a bit better. Right, so I've just got this cheap little uh, polishing kit here. You can see it's made for a big drill, but I'm just using it with this little third-party Dremel tool that I've got. Okay, it's looking a bit of a kind of melted mess, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a good wash now with uh, some IPA and toothbrush and try to get all that uh, polishing wax thing out of it. Okay, so here we have it. Now I know it looks a complete and utter mess and really it is going to be unsellable, but if it's working, then I know 100% that this spindle is the problem, which I think it is, and I can look out for another one. So I haven't really done any research into it yet. I know the ones on eBay seem to be between you know two and five pounds. So I'm sure if I look around, I'm sure I will be able to get something like this, in which case then I can pop it in there and hopefully it will be a nice easy fix. But for the time being, I'm happy with this if I can get it to work. So. Let's put it on there like so, and let's see how it fits. So that goes on lovely and easy, and comes off lovely and easy. So there's nothing there that doesn't feel different than any other CD player. And the good thing now is it is a complete sort of moulded one piece, because all that glue went in there, and I glued every single crack up as well. So the thing that's holding it into place now is basically just these little ball bearings here. Right, let's see what it sounds like. So to begin with, just purely because of copyright, I'm going to put the uh, headphones in and I'm going to give it a wobble around the place, see what it sounds like. Now, I don't know how much shaking these can take before they go wrong, but I'm sure... I mean, were they designed so you could jog with them? I don't know. So bear with me a minute. listen through the headphones and good news it is definitely working and it's not making that sort of like grating noise when I do this with it but yet it is still sensitive to knocks meaning when I shake it you don't have to shake it much before it skips now I'm thinking because it is a laser and a CD that's probably quite normal but I don't really know as I do more and more for example if I do this one here and then I shake it everywhere and it's still working perfectly then I know that this isn't working properly right now I'm thinking that it is working, but if I was to go for a run with this, then it definitely would be skipping. I'll show you that in a minute. But I think if you're walking, it probably would be okay. So now if we press play, and remember before when I shook it like this, it was going like really crazy. It was, uh, you could hear it going against the, the bodywork itself. But now listen, you can just hear the motor. So that's all fine. All the buttons appear to be working. If I push hold, you can see there it doesn't let me do anything. So obviously if it was in your backpack, you would put it on hold and then it wouldn't accidentally turn itself off or skip to the next tracks. The, the bass boost and stuff appears to be working. Volume's working, headphones working, line outs working. You've got the audio, uh, the volume limiter thing that's working. And then we've got resume off and on. Let me just go to off. I'm not exactly sure what that does. I'll tell you what, let's plug it into here. Let's see what that does. Seems to line out. Right, I'm not sure what this uh, resume does. Okay, let's uh, lower it down a little bit and I'll try to show you what I mean by it cutting out. So that's okay, but then if I went like this, you see it's gone but it will come back at the same level it was before.
but you see under normal operation it's okay so I'm thinking it's gonna be okay yeah, it's cutting out a bit there but when it's still it's okay When I do this ESP mode, look at this, super electronic shock protection, then it really is sensitive, it turns off really easy, so watch. There you go, off, you see, and I didn't shake it that much. But I need to read up about what all these modes are, but when it's normal like that, look, under normal walking in your coat, it would probably be like this, which is okay. So I'm going to take that as fixed until I do more research on them. Okay, so I had finished up that video and then I thought to myself, on eBay everybody's always selling the Sony PlayStation 1, so maybe it's a bit of a universal fitting. And sure enough, I looked on the inside and it was a disc with one of these things on with the three ball bearings. So I tried to take it off carefully, but this disc here was really thin and it snapped really easy, maybe because of the age of it. Uh, but it didn't matter because I got the middle section out. I remember this middle section was a push fit anyway. And now if you have a look, I've put it in here and it looks perfect. You can see there the little grooves, one, two, three lots of grooves, three ball bearings. Everything's working absolutely perfectly when it comes to this here. Now, interestingly enough, you can see it goes on perfectly there. It still skips just like it did before when I move it around. So I don't know if that is a fault or whether it is just a case of that's how it's designed. But if you have a listen now, if I press play, There you go. Yeah, but then when I move it around, it still skips. There you go. So it's still skipping around the place. So maybe that is a fault or maybe it's not, I don't know. But either way now, at least compared to how it looked a little while ago, it looks much better if you were to sell that, I think somebody would be quite happy putting their disc in there. So I'm happy with the end result there and I'm happy that I know you can now replace these. So if that happens on any of the other ones, I uh, it won't be such a daunting job. It'd be quite an easy job because they just pop off and pop back on again. So it's, it's useful to know. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for the rest of the videos in this uh, Discman series and also loads of other trying to fix videos as well. Take care. Bye now.